Apple just announced their new line of Mac products. Yesterday, we talked about the MacBook Pro 13 and what specs that I recommend for that. And today, it's the MacBook Air's turn. So what are the new updates and what would I end up recommending to you if you were looking to buy a brand new MacBook Air? Let's find out. You guys said to slam the cover but I don't wanna lock it. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So yes, the brand new M1 chip from Apple is, it's, I'm trying to have a hard time. No, you, nobody wants to be that YouTuber that says game changing all the time because it's kind of a dead overused term, but the M1 chip is kind of game changing, especially when it comes to the MacBook Air because I personally, if you've seen my videos previously about the MacBook Air from earlier this year, it's an okay computer, but it's never been something that I've recommended because it had some real significant thermal problems. However, this new MacBook Air, I'm actually really excited for, and I did, okay, spoilers for the end of the video, I already purchased one and it should be here next week. And it's really the processor inside of it that's why. So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna go through all of the cool new things of the MacBook Air, and then we'll go through some configurations and what I would recommend if you just like, you have to buy it today. So first off, yes, the MacBook Air is rocking the Apple M1 chip and they're saying this is their thinnest, lightest notebook and it's completely transformed and I 100% agree. Earlier this year when they released another version of the MacBook Air, it did have a fan, but that fan wasn't connected to anything and Intel chips, they do run kinda hot and the most important thing when it comes to laptops, the absolute most important thing, the specs on this, matter, but they only matter so much. The most important thing is thermal performance and Apple Silicon chips really seem to be able to provide a lot of power without needing a lot of power, thereby circumventing a lot of the thermal problems other laptops have. And the MacBook Air doesn't even have a fan and it looks like Apple thinks they're gonna be able to properly manage this. And I really, really think they do. And they're gonna, they're promising all of this with a CPU that's 3.5 times faster and a GPU that's up to five times faster than the previous MacBook Air. That is wild. And they're doing it all for the same price of $999. I'm telling you, this is wild. This M1 chip, you can see it right here, small chip, giant leap. Normally when Apple makes a product, like you see the iPad, you see the iPhone, they have what's called a system of chips. And you can see it here, where the SOC, the M1, actually has a CPU, GPU, neural engine, IO, all of that is built right in. The equivalency for the M1 is it's built off of a five nanometer process. And for tech nerd speak aside, that just means that the transistors are smaller so they're able to pack more in there. For example, Intel, the big chip manufacturer that made the chip inside of this, is currently having problems going to seven nanometer technology. This is five. 16 billion transistors. The equivalent of this, this will be an eight core CPU, four high efficiency cores and four power cores. For example, this is the MacBook Pro 16. This is the top of the line MacBook Pro 16 with the i9 processor. That i9 is an eight core CPU. Now we haven't seen yet what this kind of power will be like. Clock speed's not necessarily the right term, but how much power they're actually able to get out of this processor. Could it be stronger than the i9? Maybe. Yep, we already mentioned that. It's an eight core CPU, four cores. What's really interesting, what I think Apple's gonna be able to do with this is a lot of the things that they were talking about in that presentation with like quick wake up stuff like that. I think that's gonna do with a lot of this battery life that they're also saving use. They're also talking about 18 hours of battery life. What? These are like, it's iPad level of battery life in an actual computer. And look at that, thermal efficiency, no fan, no noise, just air. A truly quiet laptop is like the holy grail of laptops, right? As I said, thermal performance is the most important thing that you can get out of a laptop. So what do most brands do? What do most companies do? They put big fans, well, you can't see. Wow, what a terrible example, Gary. But they put big fans inside of their computers to get all the heat away from the CPU and the GPU. This one doesn't, and it's gonna be quiet, so you don't have to hear the all the time. It's annoying when you work with a laptop. The aluminum heat spreader dissipates the heat the system generates. I, we're, we have got to put that to the test. Machine learning, it does have the same 16 core neural engine that the rest of the line that we talked about had. It does have Mac OS Big Sur, which is built, Mac OS Big Sur, the new Mac operating system, is built all around this. So now Apple truly controls. They control the software, they control the hardware, they control the entirety of the platform. I cannot wait to see how all of this works together because it is, you can see the biggest collection of apps. Your apps that you run on your iPhone and your iPad will now natively run on your MacBook. That's 
gonna be so cool. Look, Among Us, we all play that, right? I'm a terrible liar, so I don't I don't ever play it. There, right there, speed and responsiveness. It says more power and wakes instantly, and I think we get that because of those four high efficiency cores that we were already talking about. Unified memory. Now, one of the things that we'll talk about here when we go through the actual, like, which ones should you buy, the unified memory, the specs make it seem like this has like eight gigabytes of memory or 16 gigabytes of memory. And for traditional computers, yeah, that's pretty low. But imagine how powerful my iPad Pro is, and that only has, what, six gigabytes of RAM? I do think that the reaction to unified memory is a little, uh, is a little outdated. Let's actually see what this looks like when we get it on hand, because I bet that the eight gigabytes and the 16 gigabytes is gonna be phenomenally powerful and fast. Looks like we still get up to two terabytes of storage in an iPad Air that's like that thin. That's gonna be pretty wild. I think it has the exact same display that we're seeing on the MacBook Pro. One of the new benefits, it looks like it does have the P3 wide color gamut, which is 25% more colors than sRGB. If you're a video editor, you'll like having color accurate displays. Pixel density, True Tone, again, we talked about it. I'm not a big fan of True Tone. And much like the MacBook Pro, this isn't actually having the camera in the computers not getting updated. But what is getting updated is the image signal processor. So they're gonna do a little more software magic to make your webcam look a little bit better, which is kinda needed because that 720p HD webcam doesn't look very good. Man, I spend so much of my day on a web conference anymore and they may not physically be able to update the camera. Maybe the chassis is too thin to put a better camera in there, but if they can make it look good, 720p doesn't necessarily have to look bad. So long as the noise is controlled, the sharpness is okay, and it doesn't just look like garbage, who cares what the camera actually looks like or 720p and not. I mainly watch YouTube in like 720p. It's not necessarily the resolution that's the problem. So hopefully their new image signal processor on the M1 chip We'll be able to do a lot of that. Three-way microphone array, like I said in the last video, should be pretty good. That's what the MacBook Pro 16 has. Still got the Magic Keyboard, and the MacBook Air does not have the touch bar. It has the function keys, and I... So here's the thing, right? If the MacBook Air ends up being like as powerful as my iPad Pro, it might be my new travel laptop that I just take with me everywhere because I'm exceedingly excited about it, and it's Prospect. Still has the Magic Keyboard. I love the new Magic Keyboard a lot. Force Touch trackpad, Touch ID in the corner, connectivity. It has Wi-Fi 6 and Thunderbolt and USB 4. So it still has Thunderbolt 3. That was something that I got wrong in the MacBook Pro 13 video from yesterday. It's not Thunderbolt 4, it just, it's Thunderbolt and USB-C 4. Thunderbolt 3, still incredibly powerful. You can push to 6K external displays, data transfers of up to 40 gigabits a second, crazy stuff. And it's gonna let you take this and use that terrific Thunderbolt 3 versatility to use it as like an actual desktop. If you don't need that much power, the MacBook Air might be like the best. Just plug it into a monitor at your house and you're good to go. And here we go. Now we're talking about which one is right for you. You can see we've got the MacBook Air at the lower end, the MacBook Pro 13 in the middle, and the MacBook Pro 16 all the way on top. Man, look at that though. 18 hours of battery life for the MacBook Air, 20 hours of battery life for the MacBook Pro 13, 11 hours of battery life for the MacBook Pro 16. Maybe it's time for the MacBook Pro 16 to get an update. That, that is a future video. Okay, I think we've covered everything that I wanna talk about for this. So let's go over and talk about the configurations. Like what would I recommend if you wanted to buy one of these? Like I said, I did buy one of these and I bought the base model because I normally buy base models of things. And it looks like for the base model, you're gonna get the Apple M1 chip with the eight core CPU and a seven core GPU. So it looks like they're turning off one of the cores of the GPU maybe for power or just to make you buy the higher end model. So let's see here, eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of solid state drive. I don't know, it's 2020. It's gonna be 2021 by the time most people have their hands on this. 512 is kinda like the standard if you're gonna be looking for a laptop. Like 256 gigabyte, that's just not enough anymore. Eight gigabytes of unified memory, yeah, we'll see how fast that is. You can't like speed up to store more stuff on it. I do wish it was 512. Then we've got the higher end model with the M1 chip, eight core CPU and eight core GPU. I wonder how much, I wonder how big the difference between the one core would be. That's something maybe we'll see what the MacBook Pro 13 looks like, and then maybe we can get a delta of that additional core of GPU. But that's still like a seven core GPU and an eight core CPU, that's gonna be phenomenally powerful. Okay, so the base model is $999. This, the higher end base model is $1,249. We do just get the two Thunderbolt ports. And I guess that's not as big of a deal for the MacBook Air. 
unlike the MacBook Pro 13, there's never been a MacBook Air with four ports, but I do, if you're only gonna give me two ports, I do wish there was one on each side. It's just nicer because I like to have things plugged in different directions, and when I have it plugged into like a dock or something, I may want something to go that way, I may want something to go that way, so. Kind of wish it wasn't there. So let's actually see what we can do to upgrade these. Okay, we can bump it up to 16 gigabytes of RAM for 200 bucks. Again, we don't know what that RAM looks like. That sounds like a very expensive eight gigabytes of RAM, but we don't know what that unified memory really looks like yet. You can go up to two terabytes of solid state drive for 800 bucks. I don't know that I'd go that high. Um, and those are really your only options to upgrade. There's no processor to upgrade. Let's check the higher end model. There's no processor to upgrade. All you get is the M1, right? You either get the eight core or the seven core GPU. Uh, here it's also eight gigabytes, 512. Okay, so let's talk about which one would I recommend. I already told you that I bought the base model just to see how that is. And if you are looking for just the cheapest way to get into a MacBook, I would seriously be surprised if this thing could not do both very well productivity wise and even for some power tasks. We'll have to see how it's actually thermally managed when we get our hands on it though. But 256 gigabyte, you can always buy an external solid state drive for that you're gonna get pretty much everything that you would need that way. I've never been a big fan of MacBook Air for power tasks, so I'm kinda of hesitant to say, spec it all the way up, you know, spec it all the way up. But I would say, if you are planning to do some more work with this, you're gonna use this as like your main work device. I would still probably go with that lower end model that starts out for $1,000. And then I would get as much storage as you could afford. Probably get the one terabyte storage. That would end up costing you about $1,400, $1,399 plus tax. Or you could even just go with that $1,199 model for $512. Unified memory, if you're just using for productivity, I don't know that I'd spend the extra 200 bucks for unified memory. And if you're gonna be using this as like a video editing machine, I'd say get the MacBook Pro 13, but I'm very excited to try out this new MacBook Air. I thought the MacBook Air was kind of dead as a product line, but I think it is a perfect fit with these new Apple Silicon chips. And what would you like to see? Leave me a comment down below about what you would like to see when I get the MacBook Air in. This is the one I think I'm most excited about because I knew the MacBook Pro 13 would come out and it would be powerful, but the MacBook Air having a lot of the same functionality and power in a cheaper and smaller package, I'm, yes, I'm excited about that. And if you're curious to see what I think about the MacBook Pro 13 with Apple Silicon, you can find that right here. Click, 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 click. <laughs> Thanks for watching.